How do we get caffeine out of these coffee beans to make decaf? There are three different decaffeination processes. But first, let's talk about this molecule and the challenge of taking it out. Caffeine is small, flat, rigid, and moderately polar. The difficult part is extracting caffeine without removing the hundreds of other compounds that make coffee delicious. In solvent-based decaffeination, green coffee beans are steamed to open the pores, then introduced to a chemical that binds to the caffeine, but can't interact with most of the other compounds. Then the caffeine-filled liquid is drained away and the beans are heated to evaporate off any residual solvent. The solvent is either ethyl acetate, which is naturally occurring in fermenting fruits and sugars, or methylene chloride. Don't fear the word solvent or chemical. Dihydrogen monoxide is a scary sounding chemical and a solvent as well. In the Swiss water process, a sacrificial batch of green coffee beans are soaked to make an extract of caffeine and other molecules from the coffee. An activated carbon filter has very tiny pores that the small flat caffeine molecules can fit into, but most other molecules can't or have the wrong polarity. A new batch of green coffee enters this caffeine free extract. Extract. Osmosis pulls out the compounds in the bean that are not present in the extract. Roughly speaking, caffeine is what's missing, and most of the other compounds stay in the bean. The carbon filters continue to remove caffeine from the extract to keep the osmosis going. When the beans leave this process, they are 99.9% .9 caffeine free. Then a new batch enters and the process starts again. When CO2 is heated and pressurized to a supercritical state, it has a liquid-like ability to dissolve things and a gas-like permeability through the bean. The pressure can be precisely tuned so the density is just right to dissolve caffeine specifically. This is typically about 250 bar or the pressure of a mile and a half deep in the ocean. Moistened green coffee beans are exposed to the supercritical CO2 that carries away the caffeine, which can be recollected for other uses. When depressurized, the CO2 leaves the bean residue free. All of these processes rely on the geometry and polarity of the caffeine molecules to target its extraction, so some similar molecules can also get lost. These tend to be volatile aromatics and effervescent top notes. The compounds that provide the mouthfeel, the body, and the major flavors are basically all left intact. 